If you're wondering if HubSpot is the right tool for you, then this is the video that you need to watch. When I first started working with HubSpot, I was quite confused as to how it all works. And now I finally got the hang of it. So I created a new account. So I will walk you through how HubSpot works. I will show you how to import your contacts. I will show you how the marketing tab works. I will show you all of its sales features. And in the end of this video, you will have a basic to good understanding how to get started with HubSpot. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial and you want to have a free trial of all of the premium features, then make sure to click the link in the description down below and let's get started. So once you first log into HubSpot, this is the page that you will see. You have this annoying user guide over here. Um, it will give you all of these tasks that you need to do, but you can just skip that. Just follow with me what I'm about to show you and you can just skip through all of this and get started with HubSpot immediately. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to contact and then we're gonna click on contacts and here all of your contacts are stored into one place. Your contact page might look a little bit different. To get it similar looking to mine, then you click on edit columns and in here you can enter any associations that you have with your contacts. For example, you can have like the job title, you can have the industry and you can also do anything that you'd like. For example, let's do the conversations and then you can see all the data in there. And once you have all the columns in there that you want to show, then let's start creating a new contact. To do this, you have two options. You can either import it from a list that you already have, or you can create a new contact. I will show you both options. To create a new contact, you click on create. Here you can enter in their email, their first name, their last name. So let's just do that. Now we can enter in the first name, last name. Now you can also enter in the contact owner. So if any of your teammates have entered this in, then they are the contact owner. So that's how you can keep track of who this contact is coming from. Now we also can enter in their job title, phone number, and the life cycle stage of that lead. Uh, for example, this is just a lead, or you can do like a customer or anything that you'd like. You can put it in there. You can also change the status. For example, if it is a new lead, I would just put it on new. Or if you already have someone in a process, then you can click on like in progress or like attempt to contact anything that qualifies to your lead. So for this, I'm gonna go with new and now we're gonna click on create. So now our lead is created and let's head over to contacts again. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the same, but in bulk for the import tab, all you need is to have like a spreadsheet of all of your leads. So for example, if you have a spreadsheet with their name, last name, email, phone number, um, any other information like industry, um, stage of the lead, anything that you'd like, you can put it in there. Then you click on start and import. Then we're gonna do it from a file of our computer. And now we're gonna do like one object, or if you have multiple objects, you can do that as well. And here you can select the object that you'd like to import. I would like to import the context. Now we're gonna click on next. So we're gonna drag in the file that we have. Now I'm gonna click on next. And now you can select all of the contact properties that you have. In the example that I have, I have their first name. I have their username of like Instagram. So that doesn't apply for this list that I'm creating. I have their email address. I have their location, uh, basically like the country where they live in. And then I have an Instagram link. So I only want to use this data and their location. So all of the other columns, um, I don't care if they aren't unmapped. So I'm just going to go and click this and I'm going to hit next. And now we can create a list from this part once we agree with this. And now we can finish or import. Now you've imported all of your contacts. Now we can finally get started with using HubSpot. For this, we want to create a list. The reason why we want to create a list is because we want to target specific contacts from our subscriber list. For example, we just might want to target people in the health sector. We just might want to target decision makers like CEOs, or you might only want to contact people who you haven't reached out to in a while. So you can create like a list for that. The way we do that is we head over to contacts. Here we click on create new list. Now we're gonna do it contact based. You can either do an active list. If something changes within your contacts, then your active list will be updating this. If you do a static list, then it doesn't automatically update it. It will be like a single moment in time. So I'm gonna go with an active list example tutorial now i'm going to click on next and here we add our filters so we can have a few different filters that we can apply we're going to start with contact properties and i'm going to choose filters based on that so we can do all of these different features in here um, normally like you might want to filter it on job title and if you filter it on job title then you can add values like seo soo 
or like a manager and anything that qualifies this it will be shown in this list but for this example i want to show a different filter so i'm gonna go with industry and i want to target everyone in the health industry so now we have everyone within the health industry we have them here and it is very important that you give all of your context like something to recognize them like give them an industry give them a status anything that you can identify them with anything that you can use to create a list with to do that you select the context that you want to do this for then you click on edit and now you can select the property that you want to edit for example you can do the status and then you can do like active or inactive for example i'm going to name it active and now we've given them the active status but you can also do the same for like the industry that they work in then you type in industry and now you change like the industry i'm going to keep it to health and now all of these contacts that you selected will have the health industry connected to their details. Now let's head over to the next section that we have in HubSpot. We have the conversations. In here you have basically one big inbox where you can connect like your email, your chat, your forms, your Facebook Messenger, your WhatsApp, all into one place. So all of the messages that you will get, you can manage them through HubSpot. For this to work, you need to connect all of these accounts. And once you've done that, you can basically assign someone to manage like all of your conversations and they will see everything organized into one place. Now let's head over to the exciting bit, the marketing tab. Within the marketing tab, we have ads. Within ads, you can connect your Google account, you can connect your Facebook account. And once you've done that, then you can manage your ads through this page as well. I'm not gonna do this for this tutorial, but let me show you the email tab. In the email section, we have three different tabs that you need to check out. We have manage. Uh, here you can see all the emails that you've made. Then we have analyze. Here you can see like the status of your emails. For example, how much do they get opened? What's the click rate? What's the click through rate? And also what's the reply rate? You can see all of the stats in here. And then lastly, we have one of the most important ones, your email health. Here you can see like what the health is of your email. So for example, let's say you send thousand emails a day. Uh, your emails don't get noticed, they get straight to the spam folder, then you can keep track of the health of your email address. And then you can basically see like if you might need to create a new domain or what is going on with your email. And that's why I recommend checking this out regularly so you can see if your email health is still doing fine and that you still get a high open rate. Let me show you how you can create your very own email. We click on this button right there and then we have three options. We can create a regular email, we can create a automated workflow and we can create a blog. For the automated workflow, we have to upgrade to the premium plan and that will set you back at $20 a month. And this way you have more automation features available. So for right now, I'm gonna show you the regular email. By the way, if you want me to go in depth in the premium features as well, let me know in the comments down below and I will create a full in-depth video about this. Here we can choose our template. There are so many templates available. You have a bunch of premium ones, but for now we're gonna go with a simple basic one. And once you click on it, we come to the editor. It's a drag and drop editor. You can drag over an image in there and now you can put your image in there. You can also drag like a button, a video, anything that you'd like, you can put it in there. You can also customize it by clicking on personalize. For example, I've done that right here. Click on personalize, then you click like what you want to personalize, for example, the contact name. And then I'm gonna do like the last name. And now you can give like the default value. And here we have like hello first name, last name. And that's the way you personalize your emails. Once you're happy with the way your email looks, you click on settings, you enter in a subject line, the preview text, and you also add in a internal email name, and then you're pretty much ready to send your emails. So now we've covered that, let me show you how you can set up your own landing page through HubSpot. In the landing page section right there, we can click on create. You can either go create a website or a landing page. For now, we're gonna do a landing page. You're gonna give it a name. Now you create your page and now you can select your template. If you have a newsletter, this might be a good template for you to use, your ebook, anything that you'd like. You can also customize it once you've selected the template. Right here, you have like everything can be customized in the editor right there. If you double click, you can change the text and you can also insert anything that you'd like. You also have advanced features in there. And it also has some ways to optimize your web page. So once you've fully optimized your web page, you've entered in all your information, you can publish your landing page. 
and then you're pretty much ready to go. So then we have a few premium features, which I'm not gonna go into for this demo, um, but I do want to show you the forms. The forms is a pretty useful feature that you're gonna use in HubSpot. So let me show you how this works. You create a new form, then you can choose like if you want to have an embedded form for on your website, a standalone page, anything that you want for your form. Now I'm gonna go with a standalone page. And here we have a few options. We can choose from like templates. Let's say like a contact us page already has like the email, first name, last name, and the message in there. I'm gonna go with a blank template. And here we have the drag and drop builder again. You can say, I want to collect their first name. I want to collect their last name. Then I want to collect their phone number. And I also want to collect like their date of birth. So once you're happy with your form and you have put in all the data that you need from your contact, then you can click on update and now your form will be published. Once you have published it, you can copy this HTML code and put it on your website or you can share the link and do it that way. Now we come to the sales part. This is a very exciting part because there is so much possible within the sales pipeline of HubSpot. For example, in the deal section, here you can see like what stage your leads are currently in. To customize your pipeline, you go to your sales pipeline and you click on edit pipelines. And here you can basically configure everything that you want. For example, you can change the stage name, let's say appointment scheduled to um, like DM sent. And now we have like a 10% possibility or probability that they will convert into like a qualified to buy. And you can also configure or edit anything in there to customize your pipeline. So that's a pretty cool feature to have within HubSpot. Now we click on save and our pipeline will be updated right now. To keep track of your sales, you need to create a new deal. The way we do that, we click on deal, then we give it a name, let's say um, Bob Buys, and then we select the pipeline that we have, then we select the stage that they are in, the amount, like this Bob has a $2,000 potential. And now we click the deal type. Let's say it's a new business. We give it a medium priority and we can connect a contact to it. So let's do like sample number three. And we can also add a item. So if you don't have an item as of right now, then you need to click on manage product library. So to create a new product, you click on create product and then you give it a name. I have a content marketing agency, so I'm gonna go with a edited YouTube video. And now the SKU is the stocks keeping unit. I don't have that as a service. So we can add like a description. We can add the product type, which is a service. You can add your image URL a other URL as well, and then the price. So I'm gonna charge Bob $2,000 for this, and this will only cost me like $200 to make. Good profit if you ask me. And now we're gonna click on save. And now we have created our brand new product. So our product should appear in here. If it doesn't, then you have to refresh it, and then you might have to put everything in there again. But for now, let's go with this 10 video package and change the pricing to 10,000. It already has done that. Then we click on create. And now we can see that Bob buys is in the DM send stage. So for example, let's say Bob says, oh, then I want to buy this product from you. Then we're gonna click on qualified to buy. And we are almost at like the stage where we have like the decision maker is buying the product. Um, then we can also start assigning tasks to it. So if we go over to the task section, then over here we have a section where we can assign tasks, for example, if we want to close Bob, then we need to book a call. We also need to email him. Um, we also want to send him some samples. So over here we can create a task and we give it like a name, send samples to Bob. We're gonna give it a to-do and this is assigned to me. You can also assign it to your other teammates. And now you can also give it a reminder that will be one day before. Notes, send, YouTube video, samples to Bob ASAP. Now we're gonna click on create and now we have created a task. So now our task is in here and we can also see the status. We can complete it and yeah, this is basically a good overview of what you need to do in order to close your leads. You can see the status of everything in your business and you can also assign it to your teammates. So that's a pretty useful feature if you ask me. So now the next section that we have is service. In service, then you can see anything that's wrong or any issues that have come up with your customers. 
for example, let's say Bob wasn't satisfied with his product, then Bob can either create a ticket or Bob either contacts me like privately and then I can start like a ticket, like Bob is complaining and then I give it a status name. Uh, for example, this one is waiting on us or waiting on the contact, he is waiting on us. And then I give a description. Now I'm gonna go give it the source. He complained to me on the phone and the priority, because it's Bob, I'm gonna give it low priority. And he did this today. Now we can associate this with example number two, oh no, let's do number three. And now we have created a ticket for Bob and we can see the status of that ticket and all of our teammates can see like what is happening, what's going on, why is Bob complaining. So yeah, that is a pretty useful feature to have as well. The next two tabs that we have is the automation tab and the reporting tab. For automations, we need HubSpot Premium. If you want me to show that in the future, let me know in the comments down below and I will create a video on this. Then we also have the reporting tab. In the reporting tab, you have some pretty cool features to keep track of everything that's going on within your business. For example, right now I've set up this sales dashboard and here I can see anything that's going on within my sales. But I can also create a new report. I do that by creating a new report. Then I click on anything that I think is relevant to have a dashboard of. Um, but you can search anything that you'd like. Let's say like the context. Anything that you like, you have it in there. And you can also select like the data sources. Once you like what you see, you can save it and now you have a new dashboard added in your report. So that's basically how you can get started with HubSpot. If you want to try out HubSpot for yourself and you want to try out all of these premium features as well, then head over to the link in the description and you can get started with a free trial. And if you like this video, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next one.